Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to Strange Mind 6. I'm your host, Ruby, and today we're going to be getting back into Strange Things Are Happening in Creepers. Mirror, Mirror by Edgar J. Hyde. And this book is volume 10 of the series of Creepers. But before we begin, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It would mean a great deal to me if you did. And without further ado, my dear friends, grab a snack, grab a drink, or sit back and relax. And let's get to it. Chapter 5 The Doll the next morning, Maya woke up to the sound of barking, tiny barks, almost squeaks, coming from Sophie's room. She got up and went across the hall to her sister's room. Oh, you're up, she said, surprised to see Sophie up and dressed, chasing Sweetie around her room with a small dog toy. I've been up for hours, Sophie said with a smile. Sweetie jumped onto my pillow this morning and licked me until I woke up. She's so cute. I love her so much. I'm so glad Aunt Camilla came and brought her. Maya smiled. She was glad the puppy was taking up so much of her sister's time. She only hoped she didn't get fed up of having to get up in the middle of the night to attend to the little dog. As she sat, she noticed a little doll sitting at the top of Sophie's bed, a doll that seemed familiar. Last night, the last time she had seen that doll, it had been clutched in the dead woman's hands. A shiver went right up through her body. What was going on? Inwardly shocking and shaking but trying to remain calm she asked Sophie where she'd gotten the doll she was in my room this morning on the chair sitting on the chair that you're sitting on I I thought you or Danny had left her for me didn't you Sophie said Maya knew that the doll was definitely the one from the mirror. She just didn't want to believe it. The doll belonging to the little girl whose mother had been killed was in her little sister's room. Who had put it there? The whole thing was impossible. She had to try to stay calm and compose herself as best as she could. No, I didn't put it there, but it may have been Danny, who knows doesn't matter anyway, does it? She's very pretty. What will you call her? Sophie shrugged. She didn't seem too overly interested in the doll, instead carefully watching Sweetie as she tried to eat the contents of her dollhouse. Funny how they try to eat everything, isn't it? Maya agreed. As she got up to leave, she picked up the doll without Sophie noticing and left the room to go find Danny. Breakfast will be ready soon, Sophie. Come downstairs when you want some. Almost running along the hallway, Maya burst into Danny's room. Danny was still asleep, but not for long. Danny! Danny! Come on! You have to wake up! You're not going to believe this! Danny struggled into the sitting position. As Maya drew the curtains, letting some sunlight flood into the dark bedroom. What? What time is it? Maya? Is there a fire or something? What's the big deal? Maya thrust the doll in front of her sister. This, she said almost triumphantly. What do you make of this? It's a doll, mumbled Danny, 
pulling the covers up to her shoulders to defend against the chill of the morning. Then, jolting upright, she said, But not just any doll! Sleep wearing off, she recognized the familiar dress, hair color, and shiny little face of the doll in the mirror. Where on earth did you get her? She asked Maya, panic starting to set in. Sophie's bedroom, her sister replied. What? Sophie's bedroom? Who put it in there? Are we even sure it's the same one? It can't be. I mean, things in a mirror don't come to life. I mean, they can't come out of mirrors and walk. Tanny, reflections are what you're supposed to see in mirrors, not horror stories. Look, I'm trying to be rational about this, but it's rather difficult when you just can't understand anything. Maybe we could tell Aunt Camilla now. Do you think she'll believe us? I don't know. I'm afraid to even touch the doll. What are we going to do with her? I don't think we should leave her in Sophie's room. And quite honestly, I don't love the idea of having her here with me. Danny said. Maya sighed. Guess she'll have to stay in my room for now. If Sophie asks, we'll... Well, we'll say we thought we'd make a new dress for her, since this one's a little torn, although I don't think she will, since she's totally obsessed with Sweetie. Danny looked incredulous. A new dress. When have you or I ever been any good at sewing, or the least bit interested in making new clothes for dolls? I think you'll have to come up with something better than that. Maya was forced to smile. Yeah, I guess you're right. It is a little out there, but so much has been happening recently, it's no wonder I'm losing touch with reality. Okay, I'll go put the doll in my room and we'll go downstairs for breakfast. We'll wait until Sophie asks before we go into any explanations if she even notices she's missing and next time she takes sweetie out for a walk we can talk to aunt camilla about all the strange things that are going on and so they did sophie had barely finished eating her pancakes with syrup a favorite of aunt camilla and sophie then she was gone sweetie scampering behind her tail wagging in anticipation of the fun she knew they would both have outside. Aunt Camilla, began Maya. How's your imagination these days? Aunt Camilla wiped some syrup from the corner of her mouth and looked at her nieces expectantly. Imagination? What a funny thing to ask. But you girls think you get past the age of 15. You lose your imagination. Well, let me tell you. Mine is just as good now as it ever was. So go on, elaborate, please. Leaning on both her elbows on the breakfast table, looking from one girl to the other, she waited for one of them to speak. Ten minutes later, and with parts of the story being told by both sisters at the same time, Aunt Camilla's elbows remained on the table, well, girls, that certainly is a story for someone with a vivid imagination, she said finally. I don't even think you could have made that one up. You mean you believe us? asked Danny. We're not sure if we can believe it ourselves, and we really don't want to scare Sophie more than she already is. But we just don't know what to do. Just then... The kitchen door burst open, and Sophie almost fell inside. Sweetie! I've... I've lost Sweetie! I let her off her leash for a minute so we could run around more, and next thing I knew, she was gone. I think she must have been chasing something, a squirrel maybe, 
and I called and called, but she didn't come back, and oh, Aunt Camilla, please help. We just have to find her. The young girl collapsed, sobbing into Aunt Camilla's arms. Now then, calm down, dear. We'll find her. Just wait a second while I get my jacket. And if we don't find her, she'll be back soon. She'll be hungry, you'll see. She won't be gone long. Aunt Camilla reached inside the coat closet and took her thick jacket from the hook. You two girls better stay inside. It's cold out. And anyway, your mother might call. Pushing Sophie in front of her, Aunt Camilla turned back to Maya. Don't mention any of this to your mother. If she does call, there'll be enough time to let her know everything when she gets back. Danny and Maya began to clear away the breakfast dishes. Maya, Danny began, where did you put the music box last night when we left the study? I don't think I picked it up. To tell you the truth, and if I did, I certainly don't know where I put it. Let's finish cleaning this mess up for now, and then we'll go have a look. Maybe by then, they'll be back with Sweetie. From outside the window, the two girls could hear alternative voices calling the puppy's name. First Aunt Camilla, loud and shrill, then little Sophie, sometimes sounding as though she were trying to choke back her tears. Mrs. Molina did end up calling later in the morning to say that they were having such a good time that they had decided to stay for the rest of the weekend as long as Aunt Camilla was able to stay with the children. Maya explained about the missing puppy and that Aunt Camilla was outside searching for it, but really, no one thought there would be a problem with Mom and Dad staying a bit longer. By lunchtime, the puppy still hadn't been found. Aunt Camilla had forced Sophie to come inside after both had searched around the house a number of times. Aunt Camilla had made warm soup for Sophie and she sat down with her as she ate at the kitchen table. She'll turn up, Sophie. I know she will. Just wait and see, Aunt Camilla said. Sophie, however, was beyond consoling and was finding it very hard to stop herself from crying. Maya and Danny tried to comfort her the best that they could. Aunt Camilla's right, said Maya. She'll turn up. Dogs don't like to be outside in the cold. She'll be back before dinner, you'll see. Danny put an arm around her young sister's shoulders. Let's go play until Sweetie comes back. Why don't we go find your music box and watch the ballerina twirl around? They o that always puts a smile on your face. Sophie tried to dry her eyes on her already tear-soaked shirt sleeve. Okay, she answered reluctantly. But I don't know where that is either. You'll have to help me look. Aunt Camilla smiled gratefully at Danny. Go on then, girls. Go and look for the ballerina. I'll keep watch through the kitchen window for Sweetie. And remember, I'll be here for the rest of the weekend. So start thinking on what we can do to pass the time. Maybe I could care curl your hair, Sophie. How does that sound? And that is the end of chapter 5, my dear friends. Tune in next time to hear chapter 6, Keeper of Lost Souls. This has been Ruby, signing off.